From 1984 to 1989, I was posted as a journalist in Beijing, China, reporting for the French news agency AFP. Since then, I have focused my work on China because from the very beginning I was convinced that China would remain a major threat for the world. China, the biggest threat. China is still the biggest threat to the United States. They want to dominate economically, technologically, geopolitically and militarily. That proved to be true. The reality today is that China's destiny is very much tied to the world destiny itself. When Deng Xiaoping launched his program of economic reforms in 1978, there was a great hope both inside and outside China that the country would open up to the outside world. The Chinese people started to work very hard since they were told by Deng Xiaoping that they could enrich themselves. Soon, China's growth skyrocketed and remained around 10% for almost four decades. China became soon the second biggest economy in the world. The Chinese people recovered their dignity lost during the Cultural Revolution and they were very proud that their country became respected on the international arena. But all this abruptly changed when Xi Jinping came to power in 2012. He started a policy that was and still is based on aggressivity. China became very aggressive towards all democratic countries, especially the United States. His hidden ambition is to conquer the world. He directed his threats towards China's neighbors, especially Taiwan. His policy is based on intimidation, coercion, and threats. His goal is to terrorize so that neighboring countries would accept without any condition all demands dictated by China. But he committed some serious mistakes. Among them is Hong Kong. When Hong Kong people, especially the young generation started to demonstrate on the streets against the rising influence of the Chinese Communist Party on their daily life. He was the one who imposed the national security law in June 2020. That law gives the possibility to sentence all so-called dissidents to life in prison. But that also killed the concept invented by Deng Xiaoping of one country, two systems, which China thought they could use in order to convince the Taiwanese people to accept the so-called reunification. Taiwanese people now realize fully the true nature of the CCP and its vast majority now refuse to negotiate with Beijing any chance of reunification. China responded with military drills. It fired ballistic missiles towards Taiwan and repeatedly rehearsed the assault of Taiwan. The second mistake was the terrible oppression or suppression of the Uyghurs in Xinjiang, formerly the Eastern Turkestan, which was an independent country invaded by the People's Liberation Army in 1950. This suppression of the Uyghur identity profoundly changed China's image for the worse. The third and possibly the worst mistake was his zero COVID policy, which had and still has profound consequences for the Chinese economy. China's GDP growth plunged to its worst level since 1978 and at around the 4 and possibly 5% annual growth rate. The unemployment rate skyrocketed to an unseen level, especially among the young generation. With Taiwan, there is now a possibility of an all-out war which can evolve in a world war. China de facto alliance with Russia since the invasion of parts of Ukraine in since February 2022 is also an incredible threat for, dem for the democratic world. Partly because of Xi Jinping's policy, the world is now more uncertain than ever since the end of World War II in 1945. So the question is, 
how to stop China. This is basically what my book, China, the Super Predator, is talking about. I believe that freedom and democracy can and will prevail on the condition that all democratic countries abandon their naive conception of China and realize that they must unite to be together to face China and its dictator Xi Jinping. They must say no to Xi Jinping.